and uh, what really do they intend to achieve with the program they held yesterday? Dr. Osafuma, good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning. I am Mr. Osafuma. I still keep calling you doctor. <laughs> no, you are not the only one. I Many people do. Maybe I, if, you serve in, if you serve in government for eight years <laughs> and you do the kinds of things you do, you should be given a PhD or something. I don't know. So, Mr. Osafuma, how, how are you? How are you? How are you? Oh, I am fine. Are you now an, a retired old man or you are still a vibrant? Uh, Obviously retired, but I'm doing a number of consultancies for the World Bank. Okay. In fact, uh, next week, three finance, former finance ministers have been invited to Harvard to lecture 20 finance ministers in current. Mm -hmm. uh, the South African former finance minister, Trevor Manuel. Okay. In Gozi, the Nigerian, he's now current finance minister, mm -hmm. and myself. Okay. We are to go to Harvard and spend about a week to relate with new finance ministers of Africa mm. and discuss details, budgeting, mm. fundraising, not fundraising, and revenue raising, and that kind of thing with them. And this is the type of job I've been going to Liberia. I'm discussing procurement act with a number of East African countries and that kind of thing. So mm. I'm retired, but... Uh, so uh, the World Bank and other African countries are benefiting from your wisdom? Yes. But Ghana, and Ghana, nobody but, but unfortunately, Ghana is not. No, nobody consults me. Which is really the story of our life, is, is it no, not? Nobody consults me in anything. But that's um, sad. But the, the immediate past finance minister, we never talked in, for, on the economy. I mean, Dr. Dufour, yes, you never had a chat about the economy. the economy? No, we talked about other things. Like we met in Funra, we said, how are you? And that kind of thing. So you've never spoken to the tech person he was taking? No. Wow. But that's sad. Because, I mean, what we see from the Americans at least is an attempt to, to help. So when there's a new president, consults the former president because of his experience. And you, 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 you think that they will draw from your... Is it a question only of the new government not wanting to engage or you also not being interested to talk to them? If anybody, I am, I'm so ready to talk. Why would I talk to Americans? Why would I talk to other African finance ministers and not talk to my own? I even feel embarrassed of the situation. Personally, I feel that uh, if anybody were to ask my opinion, and any time people have asked my opinion, I give it. I mean, we are talking about Ghana. We are not talking about South Africa. We are not talking about South Africa. We are talking about Ghana facing specific problems. So whoever can help, why not? But you can understand that because of the suspicion between the two main parties. Yes, it is. It's not like It has been over... Uh, this division... It's doing uh, now doing a lot of harm because people saying right things are even misinterpreted. You get my point. The first person to talk about justice in this country strongly was former President Rollins. Mm -hmm. He said there will be no peace without justice. If you recall, he said this several times. And uh, we should give his name. He knew what he was talking about. But then that fits into what I just asked you. So yesterday you were the special guest to address this foundation's launch. And you... you, you I'm the founding chairman of the foundation. You are the founding chairman of the foundation. Yes. Why do you want to found such a foundation? I realize that our founding fathers of this nation at independence give us a coat of arm. And beneath is written freedom and justice. You take our national anthem and it's full of things to do with justice and courage. But as the nation grows on, people are sidestepping the justice and we are talking more and more about peace. There's nothing wrong talking about peace. But we should know that peace itself flows from justice. And therefore, please, let's remind ourselves that if we want a lasting peace, we should as much as possible, promote justice. And that is where I'm coming from. I'm getting worried. And I'll give you a typical example. In two or three examples, I said, after the election, we heard that Nanado said he was going to go to court. But the first reaction of most of us, me, I said, and what is the evidence? So we are, hold on. Give me a few. I said, this is not enough. I said, we are working on it. At some level, it was obvious that he had evidence. So the, my advice would not be, please wait for no, wait for 2016. No, my advice would not be that. Because for the benefit of this nation, for the deepening of democracy in Ghana, it is important even to develop reforms into the election. That will prevent anybody from wrecking. That will prevent our sovereign right, will, being taken away by the one who comes. Stalin said something. He said, 
It doesn't matter who votes. What matters is the one who counts. The Stalin in Russia time. That is different. It's a communist state. So in Russia at that time, the voting was just a formality. They determined who was going to be the president. But we don't want that in Ghana. Our constitution is talking about the sovereign will of the people. So the advice to such a situation is you have evidence. If he has, it is in the interest of all of us that the things are straightened before nothing. At least when the right thing is done, when justice prevails, the occurrence will stop in the future. So is this a reaction to people who seem to be saying to Nanado and the MPP to let go? Is that why you thought it necessary? No, but it's part of it. It's a reaction to people who are always shouting, Fami Nyame, Jaimenka. You put it on a very nice torch. I just take it by force. And there are four people here who can force me to give you this. Oh, yeah. Hey, this man is strong. If you don't take it, you beat you. Let him take it. He's troublesome. He will destroy the things the studio. That is not the answer. Somebody else stand by and say, look, yeah, this is not your watch. Give it back to that young man. He has money. He can even buy you one. That is seeking justice. That is trying to arbitrate, but coming from the window of justice. That is what I am promoting. But are justice and peace necessarily conflicting goals? No, they are not. Because conflict. in the way you present they it, harmonize. you present it as if to say people are looking for peace at the expense of justice. Yes. Which is not necessarily the case. This is not necessarily the case, but that is what we are dri dri driving to, and it's dangerous. But you must always seek peace. It's very important. Harmony is what we all need to have a good sleep. So we need to have the peace. But the peace cannot come when you are trampling on justice. Let the justice also be obtained. And but, from but it as, as any, okay, let me, let me just introduce Mr. Stephen Intim as well. Listeners, we've been joined by Mr. Stephen Intim as well, who is a member of the foundation, if I'm not mistaken, and he was at the launch. Uh, we will bring you into the discussion as well. But again, ha, is there any objection? The, the triatize that you the treatise there, that 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 there are, that, there are that, you, that you there are a lot of I mean you may recall that there was a gruesome murder in the population. People were killed. People, we know those who killed them because we were holding the cutlasses in the broad daylight. Reports were made to the police and as we speak, no arrest have been made. Me and you heard and saw pictures in the papers the assault on Asla Usu at uh, what did you do during the registration? She was slapped in the broad day. There were pictures of it. People who did it, their pictures came the front page of one of the papers, mm -hmm. I think Daily Guide. To date, even though Asla made reports and gave all the necessary details and description, no arrests have been made. I know five other young men in Tamale who have been uh, remand for five years. There was a shooting incident. Somebody died. Houses were burned. It's a very bad. Agreed. But does not mean that you will not adjudicate. You will not go into the merit of the case and free those who are innocent. I just heard last week that one of those being detained is going to be amputated. I suspect that he's a, a diabetic. He's a developed person. I mean, you can't have that developed in our system. Why is your freedom and justice? We have agencies, we have institutions to deal, to investigate.
and you imprisoned the one who killed her husband. Does it really help her? Completely, the answer is no. He's retained national justice. But as an individual, the suffering is deepened. The breadwinner is gone. So we should take another step to provide some compensation, provide scholarship to all the children if we haven't done it. But what prevented you from doing that in the eight years you were in power? Because that's the question that will this arise. Is, this is wrong. No, but that's, that's the point. Because if the man was so killed eight years is, ago, and you are now coming to say that oh, why... So this government has also been in power yeah. for about another five uh, years. But we, but we must also... But we must, we must, we must congratulate them for taking the action. And I'm very happy action was taken, as, as I stated. But you see, it comes to your earlier point that some of these things are being looked at from the window of party politics. And it's bad. And that's why me and you should get worried. But the people can even interpret what you did yesterday to be a continuation of that. Because even though you give me examples of injustices that have occurred, the manner in which you spoke and the kinds of things you said, it points to the fact that you feel that the election did not deliver justice to your side. And that people yes, should... I strongly feel, strongly feel based so. on the evidence I've seen, I've read... Which is yet to I'm, be proven before a yes, court yes, to determine that. It's the court that will determine exactly. the... And the, court processes the are, and the court processes are going on. Sure, sure. So, so, on. so where is... Where but nothing is, prevents you from stating the facts. But are you not trying to influence the process? Oh, not at Because all. if there's a court you are, case... You are trying to educate the public and those who are blaming Nanado for going to court. People who think that Nanado should have followed the dictum Jamenka and wait for 2016 should bow their head in shame. But that's an that's ignorant position. Because that's anybody that's who says that another should not go to court is obviously somebody who doesn't understand the way our laws work. Thank you very but much. But to spend resources we, we, we to... Have, we have constitution. Exactly. And the constitution says if you are grieved, if you have very good reasons for this, you become a petitioner and you go to the Supreme Court. Instead of taking arms as it happened in Cote d'Ivoire, as it happened in Kenya, we decided to go to court and we should congratulate you for Mr. Steven, in team, you are a leading member of the MPP. You are part of this organization. How do you convince us that it's an NGO and not a political organization? Because of the loaded things Dr. Osafo, Mr. Osafo Mafo said, a lot of the things he said were very heavily loaded. How do you convince anybody listening that this is an NGO for peace, for justice, and not another uh, political pressure group? Justice and peace. Justice yes. and justice. peace. We want to combine the two always. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Um, in the first instance, um, we are not just saying this an NGO. We've gone beyond just the, the words. We've gone to the Registrar General's Department and duly registered the Justice and Peace Foundation as an NGO, a company limited by guarantee. So if you go right now to conduct any search at the Registrar General's Department, we are going to be educated over there. In terms of the reason you gave, but your, what you did yesterday and the examples you chose to give, a lot of the things you talk about are very political. And so if you say you are an NGO, it's fine by registration. But in terms of the kind of people who were there, I remember there was a, 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 a part of the program I even found a bit unfortunate where you, Dr. Mr. Tafafo introduced his good friend, Mr. Kwame Pienim, and I, I'm not sure, but I think the people who said at him, I, the, I, I didn't do the introduction. It was it's, yeah, yeah, John, John, John Boedu and, and people hooted at him. So for why should why should people wearing t-shirts if you are launching an NGO, why should people in t-shirts be hooting at uh, Mr. Kwame Pienim for coming to a program if it is not political, if it is not because of the comments he made about the Nanado court case? But did you did you read the letters on the t-shirts? There's nothing political about it. We are just talking about justice, peace, simple. Uh, it's possible to also get some people who go beyond bounds. Uh, you can't con control a crowd like that. So please. But you don't... Okay, anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Let's come back to the issue of where we're going from here. Now, do you feel that the way the court case is going, did you did you feel you had to say this before the... Because the, the case itself will be heard on the 16th. Did you feel it was necessary to say this because of the delay, in, because to be fair, the Kenyans, be, by their law, had to do this before they inaugurated somebody. It took like two weeks. We've been doing this for a few months, and it looks like it's been quite, it's quite slow. Did you feel you had to do this because you felt that there would be an undue not, delay? I'm one of those who have not complained about the, the system, the way it is going, because it was necessary for this preliminaries to go. 
this feather and better particulars and all these things defines the case. And now the last mm -hmm. sitting, not yesterday's one, the one before yesterday, the court came out and defined two things, made the case so simple, go straight and tell us what went wrong, and also inform us the effect of these things on the actual results. So if these preliminaries had not taken place, we would have, we had in the meantime, one may be talking about 15 things, somebody else was talking about 11 things, <clears throat> narrow it to two, which satisfy everybody. So I think that it's important to do these things properly. Mm -hmm. And those nine justices sitting there, it, was, it is obvious that they know what they are about. It is obvious that the experience was being brought to bear mm -hmm. on the matter. The Kenyan comparison, I have never been too comfortable with it. Because the Kenyan's situation is that the president is not sworn in until the matter is settled. So, the so it's in everybody's interest, interest to move fast. To move fast. And then they complain about 20-something police stations. The dealt with only a few, yeah. So they went there and counted. And indeed, they changed the figures. But the figures did not affect the outcome. So let's get that straight. So that with the, the, the judges did the right thing. Mm -hmm. The complaints were genuine because they changed the figures, but the figures did not change the results. So, so we shouldn't compare the two. But there's a the fear two. that both parties are not preparing their supporters for contrary outcomes. Because you said that you have no doubt in your mind that based on the evidence and what you understand by what the evidence is, that Nanado will win. Now, I'm sure NDC will say the same thing. And I'm, I'm they, asking... They, they will say that what? They would also definitely say win. That. The evidence is. I'm sure because I've heard. You must talk no, based on the evidence. Don't talk no, but I'm saying that we've interviewed. Emotions. We've interviewed. <laughs> we've interviewed General Mosquito. Uh -huh. We've interviewed uh, Nana Tudazi, and they have stated in no uncertain terms that they are confident that they will win the court case. Now the question. When, when uh, please hold on. When you interviewed no, in the first time, he made a comment which I I, I love. He said, "Nobody can take the president to court." I'm, but I, I didn't. Okay, I don't know. That's that's obviously not true. It's, it's, yeah. So, but the point I'm making is that we are not preparing our supporters for contrary outcome than what we are expecting. And I am putting it to you that yesterday's program did not help either. Because if it will, if I'm an MPP supporter and I listen to you yesterday, I will be made to feel that we are actually winning this case. Any outcome other than winning. What, it's what, possibly an injustice. Uh, what, what is important and what is really the case is that the Supreme Court, in the time they give a ruling, rationalize it to the satisfaction of all of us listening. And therefore, yes, when people go to court, they think they would win. And if the Supreme Court comes and rationalizes the decision they make, and it would obviously make sense because they will be using the law. And the law is in the bosom of the judges. Who am I to say otherwise? So I don't think that you're right. What we are telling people that the facts are available to us. We should look forward to a good results in our favor. But if it turns otherwise, the judges will not just come out and say, you have lost. No, they don't do that. They would go, sir, because of this, 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 this evidence of yours is discarded. Because of So they will be talking things I have, might not have even imagined or I did not even know. So I would agree so with So is the party preparing itself for two possible outcomes? Everybody who goes to court should prepare himself or herself for two possible outcomes. So but you are doing so? I'm asking this question, Mr. Because situation. two of, and again, I don't, I'm sorry to bring this, but two of your very respected people have made comments suggesting that the party is not focusing on the other side, building for the future. I do agree that the court case and its outcome would inform how you approach 2016. But... The two, from reading what Dr. Mr. Safo, Mr. Pianim said and what Dr. Charles Rehubo probably said, it appears you may be sacrificing the aspect of learning from the mistakes of 2012 and also building grassroots support for yourself in anticipation of the next election. And it appears that your main fixation is with the court case. That was the import of the two, the two interventions from them for me. That, that, you are right. You are absolutely right. But they, they were also wrong in certain respects. Because they've not even taken the trouble to look for the evidence in the matter. And that is very wrong. If you won't comment on the matter, your first thing is to look for evidence. In the case of my good friend Kwame, he was even invited to a meeting where somebody was going to take us through the evidence. And he did not avail himself of it. So why would you then condemn the evidence which you have not seen? You have given the evidence. So I'm saying that both of them spoke. 
but from where they were coming from, they were speaking from a position of ignorance. Of the evidence, evidence, but not of the general context of what the party is faced with. Oh, because the, see, the, the point they are making is not only a question of the evidence, but how does the party reposition itself? And irrespective it's, of it's, what, the case, what the evidence is, it's one thing at a time. And I'm telling you that, should it in, be? My, in my view, in my view, by July, this case will be done, possibly by June. The way they've structured the hearing. Is going to be no, because you fast. see, if if let's assume that, let's fast. assume that this case could drags even be on to a to, but let's amount. assume let's assume that this case drags on to January next year. It won't. It won't. <laughs> In the way the, I, way I, the Supreme I, Court has structured it, to, no, to be, it to, will not go to, to the extent that there is no law that gives a timetable for the case to be heard with. It, it is implied. The law says that. So you cannot... When, when the hearing starts, they should sit every day, including weekends and public holidays. That has implication. Okay. That, that stresses the agency of the matter. So, so, so you are saying that you, you are confident that the case will not reach 2014, for example? Oh, no, no, no. Because th that's where the two gentlemen's fears come no, no, in no, that. No. If this case were to drag on for the next three years, are you going to spend all your political machinery, your energy, your effort that, that is why, fighting the case that, at the that, expense that, that, that of... Is why. And you have as part to be party chairman before. You know that party building is not only a question of this outcome. You, you must credit us with some level of political understanding and intelligence. If it were to drag, I think along the line, other decisions would be made. Because even as we speak, you go into the constituencies, there are people who are now campaigning to become police station chairman. And I don't see anything wrong with it. So the party is not but focused no, no, entirely no, no, no. on this process? The, the leadership of the party is focusing on this process, and they must focus on this process. The leadership of the party cannot have divided attention now, because we know that this process will not take that long. And if it's going to take maximum up to about June, then we must concentrate on this process. But look, if, sorry, if all your attention as a leader is to do with one thing at a time. Oh, the other things will be going spontaneously, but other people will be dealing with it. <laughs> yeah, there's, do you, do you, do you Mr. And, yeah. And, and also, don't also forget that uh, even the 2016 election, I can assure you some political parties, or all political parties, are coming towards it. 2016 election. It's coming on. We know it's unavoidable. Unavoidable. Yes. Uh, because I've heard people say that if the uh, based on what they understand of the MPP evidence, we may have to have a rerun of 2012, which is a possibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if that outcome ensues, then it would mean that 2016 is even a second issue. So that's where that's where the danger of a fixation on the court case comes in. Because if somebody believes that I th I think the you, are, court you, are, you are using the wrong word. It's not a fixation, <laughs> it's a concentration. If you are concentrating on something, it doesn't it's, mean it's, that it's, it's, all it's, other things are, 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 are not we are doing other things. Let me give you an analogy. Um if a football team is going into a Kutia match, you don't think about if I lose. You're always thinking about winning. The other team is also thinking about equally winning. That, that's if that's lose, a flawed strategy. If you lose, your supporters know you have lost. And they know why and how you lost. And they are watching the match. I, 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 I would rather hope to win, but prepare that I lose. The shock will not kill me. Do you expect me to come out and tell you that? Not necessarily <laughs> tell me, but if you're telling me that it's football, if I go into a game, I know that there are three possible outcomes. I can win, I lose, or I'll draw. And each of those outcomes, I must contemplate what to do when those outcomes take place. So you, I can't say that I'm going into a game and all is win at all costs. You say your mind will be to win. Exactly. But you prepare also for the other two. Specifically. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are Which is the point those gentlemen, I think, were trying to make. That you, are, you seem not to be thinking about the bigger picture, the longer term how as a you, party. How would you know about what I'm thinking? How would you know? I mean... I don't know. I mean, they are closer to the situation so than I am, but I'm sure you are than they are. That one. <laughs> okay. So this organization that you have you have launched with a very eloquent press statement. What's next? What's going to happen next with it? Yeah, we we, we intend reaching out to the regions to establish branches. Uh, general membership will be opened, and we are coming to open up the modalities for people to come and join us. I want you to join. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the nature of my work yeah. does not allow me to join. 
No, you can. Why not? I, I, it's I, an NGO. You, you can support us financially. You have to prove to me that you're an NGO with the next few press statements. Okay. Based on the evidence of what you said yesterday, it is very difficult to accept that this is purely in why, non-political why issues. Why are you trying to frown But, but injustice attempt. can be political. What are you talking about? Injustice can be political. But you have named the group an NGO and you say it's not a political pressure group. Yet, the issues you are raising are political issues. I mean, no, the matter that is, is it political? Is it some, at... Somehow it is. Oh, I see. Because if anything affects more than 20% of the population, it is political anyway. So, so everything is political? Possibly. If it, 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 that's another way of looking at it. Everything is, it, is political. Cited, but not partisan. Cited, <laughs> There's a difference. He cited instances in his keynote address yesterday of uh, cases like the Budu and Dani uh, conflicts, which are ethnic based and all these if you get into the substance of each of these cases you realize that there is injustice being perpetrated somewhere or justice has not prevailed and that is why these countries are but let me get something straight you played are they political uh, yes uh, look they are, uh, poli the, the, the politics and, and partisanship is not the same thing and i'm sure you know this better than i do so water can be political but that doesn't mean it's an mpp and dc issue so if you ask me if they are political yes are they partisan possibly not and everything is political Possibly. I wanted to... The politics of winner takes all. I can't draw from that experience because of... You can draw. So that you haven't made the no, 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 but the, 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 that's the question. So it's... The country is going through a lot. Look at the strike actions, look at all the challenges, the water crisis, the power problem. We can't say that because let, we are not let, in let power. Let me tell you what has happened. When I became Minister of Finance, Did you call the Pepper? first person I looked for was Kosibutri. I sat down in Washington with Kosibutri and went through some of the problems in the economy. He was not even in Ghana. I went to the IMF meeting and I looked for him and he also obliged when he found out I was frantically looking for him. And I said, why, because why did this not work? He gave me to some of the areas I would give him back. When I became Minister of Education, the people are living, I invited all most of the ex ministers of education who are alive. SKB Asante, that old man, was in my office. George I was. I invited them to discuss the Nagrat problem and all these things, even before I took over, to draw on their experience. There's no point you uh, repeating the mistakes of the past. And it worked for me because I'm telling you that some of the things advice they gave me, I used and used effectively. So, the effort must come from... From, from the person in leadership? Yes, how can I go take my papers? And, and go to Sector and say, I want, so to, help I want okay. to help you. Okay, I think that's a fair point. Yes. Mr. Yasamafu, thank you very much for your time. I wish we could talk more, but we hope you come out. I mean, this is the first time we've seen you in a long time. It's the civil team as well. Let's hope that we can get more chance to, to, to reflect on we have issues. a chance to talk, combine justice with peace. It is important. If we want lasting peace then justice it must that, be the same peter Tosh's song is a very prov provocative song flag. though he says everyone is crying out for peace but none, none is crying out for justice but the mistake peter Tosh makes is he says i don't want peace i want equal right and justice you see peter Tosh is missing the point you, you if you if you any justice without peace imagine how it will work so the two must go hand in hand. He, told you what so he, wanted. he says i don't want oh, no peace i want equal right and justice equal what right what is equal right justice but how can you have equal rights without peace? It will flow. It will so flow. if we both have two, indicated so at the let, end of his speech. So if, if listen, listen, yes, let me, let me yes. point there. At the end of his speech, he said, sow the seed, which is justice, and mm -hmm. peace will flow out of it. At my way King of Solomon power. wanted to divide the babies into two. That would have been justice. But is that the kind of justice you want? But immediately, because of the wisdom of the woman, of the woman, exactly. and of King Solomon himself, he knew <laughs> that the actual mother will refuse the division exactly and that's what happened so they so we want justice, justice prevail equal rights and peace all together yes or mr in, 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 in some from, measure you should start from somewhere <laughs> you must start from justice you must start from our coat of arms <laughs> they will not justice agree. and freedom I want to talk to you guys again it's very good seeing you mr Safo Marfo and mr civilian team as well when we come back we'll be following up on the land issue interesting follow-ups uh, later on stay tuned
This is the City Breakfast Show. The city's biggest conversation. No more queuing and waiting. No more hustling and rushing. No more keeping the dark. Cause we've done.